So first of all, Chris, uh, you're not Donald. So why don't you tell us a little bit about coming up with the idea for this character and, and making the decision to, to play him? Um, yeah, so it was like born out of an idea that our buddy Kyle Espelita had to uh, put Jesse and I together and I was going to play a weirdo. Um, so we kind of turned this small idea into a, a little bit bigger short. A small, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Why didn't Jesse, you jump in. Yeah, well, okay, so yeah. we, uh, <laughs> it, be it began as a short uh, in 2012, and uh, it really was almost yeah, more it. as it. like an exercise, uh, and let's then it. it was sort of kind of improv sort of finding these characters uh, and really kind of finding that short in a way. We shot it in a weekend, and we had been making stuff for a long time. This is the first time we were like, okay, maybe we can actually build something more substantial around this character dynamic, and that was when we began working on the feature. Yeah, and I, I think Donald, you know, he started with the voice, and then we did the, we did the short, and the short was really improvised, so I just kind of, you know, developed the character through the short. But, you know, the Donald is not that far from who I kind of am, and this r running shtick I have with Jesse of annoying him, and I just kind of changed my voice a little bit. <laughs> it's a it's a great short. I guess it's online if people want to see it. But the the uh, it might not we took it off. Yeah, oh. we took it offline. Yeah. It was at some point. Yeah. But the the arc that these guys go through is kind of fascinating because you know Jesse, you enter into it and not really sure what to make of this guy from your past, and then over, over the course of the movie, somehow something starts to click again. So wh how much did you guys already have uh, a kind of working dynamic you could? play off of to, to kind of make that come across and you know how did you sort of develop it for for the screen well I mean the the script was really specific I mean as far as like how that kind of got written we knew where we were gonna go but yeah within like these scenes I mean we could we could kind of find our way through it just because we we knew after having worked together for so long how how much we could you know just to be clear your pals right you in real life. Know. Yes. Absolutely. So that that's gotta help. Yeah. <laughs> and we've been doing we've been working together for like seventeen years. So Yeah, like, like yeah, I mean like, like I said, I kinda just always annoy him. Um so it was just an extension of that and we just decided to put it on film or video. Um Yeah, but no, I think it was just like you know, the setup is really simple. I mean there's nothing groundbreaking about the concept and the setup, and then I just think, you know, we just Try to make these guys interesting. I don't know. Is that interesting? Well, what is interesting about it is that you know, on the one hand, it's uh, you, it feels kind of like a, co a familiar comedy, it's sort of a buddy comedy, but there's also something kind of melancholic and, and understated about it. So, Kyle, as as the producer on this project, when you when you read it, I mean, what was your take, uh, at least on the page, of of what this movie was? Was it supposed to be funny? I mean, what sort of bucket did you put it into? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought it w was a comedy. I mean, I think of it as a comedy, you know, I think of it, and I thought of it first as a broad comedy. That's why I thought uh, that was what sort of drew me into the short for sure. And then, but the also like the thing that kept like, kept me going back to watching the short was that there was something else going on there. There was like a pathos there. There was like a real sort of depth that was not just the jokes, even though I thought all that stuff worked really well. Um, but yeah, yeah. I know it also, I should also say there's a lot of, I mean, a lot, like we made this with a very small team of like maybe 12 people and then. I think ten Three of those people are yeah. in the ha in the house tonight, including the other producers, Sam Fleischner and Sean Lamb and Caitlin Mayner and Micah Bloomberg, and our cast is some of the cast is here in the back: Pat Linguzzi and Ted Arcidi. Um, a lot of a lot of the, you know, it was a real small, committed team, and and uh, they're all still here hanging out. Did I, did I forget somebody? Yeah. No, 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 nothing. No, no. I was never mind. And, and I usually thank thank you everybody for coming. Oh, Frank and Frank Heath is also Frank yeah, Heath our here, editor. Thanks for yeah. coming, but you don't have to. Oh, and our sound team, Fall on Your Sword, they're all here. Oh really? Got him. So there's probably somebody else I'm forgetting. So there's this cliched audience question about improvising, but I think it's relevant here because a lot of the times we see Donald just kind of like go off on these wild tangents, and you don't know quite where he's going to take us. How, I mean, how did you kind of conceive of the way this guy sees the world and talks about things? You know, did you did you improvise your way through anything that we're seeing here? 
No, I mean, there was... I mean, it was all scripted. I mean, the concepts, the ideas, his philosophy, all, all that stuff was on, on paper. But, like, you know, maybe the rant in the bedroom was embellished a little bit. I mean, there was, you know, how we deliver the lines. I mean, we definitely c could go off script and stuff. But, I mean, Donald, the... Yeah, I mean, the character of Donald was definitely there. Um, yeah, and like I said, I mean, I really do. I just feel like a lot of the stuff I was saying, or I don't know, I just don't feel like it's that far from who I am. And then I guess there this reminds me of a time. It's the 20. <laughs> As you were saying. Um, yeah, so no, it is, all right. Um, yeah, I just feel like it wasn't too far from who, you know, who I, yeah. God, I feel like I'm doing a terrible fucking job. Well, I'm we're, sorry, we're getting everybody. there, we're I'm getting there. I'm terribly sorry that there's not a single bit of good information coming out of my fucking mouth right now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're finding our way. Yeah, all right. Let's do it. J Jesse, as, as, as the, the... We're taping this. Let's go yes, start from the exactly. beginning, so... <laughs> Repeat all yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. What was the first question? <laughs> as, as, so, Jesse, you're basically playing the straight man here. Uh, uh, what, what's, what is that like? I mean, having to react to all the crazy stuff that Donald's saying to you. I mean, did you lose it over the course of many takes? Or, I mean, what kind of challenges are there involved in that? Yeah, yeah. I, I lost it a lot. That was part of the fun of it. We knew it was working, I think, when we were cracking up, when we were shooting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was built into the script. I mean, that's the, it has like a really loose Im improvised feel, but I mean, we spent a years on the script trying to f figure out exactly how it was all going to kind of fit together. So, and, and also this is an 11 day shoot, a couple days of reshoots, but it was like pretty tense to get it all done. So like it was, it was like we, we were kind of grinding stuff had to get done. So yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, we weren't cracking up much um, because it was like we're just more worried, like, you know, so much that he's not saying a lot, Peter. So you're starting to shoot it. And it's just like, oh, you know, he's not doing fucking anything. And I'm just like spewing what I thought, you know, was just like just dick jokes. And just uh, so it just felt like nothing was happening. And it was just such a short, condensed period that, yeah, I don't know. It was that, that again, I'm just fucking knocking it out of the park right now <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just that <laughs> fuck oh god but it was it was also like in real time where it was like we were just kind of getting takes and it was how it was like how that take was gonna go I, that's how i was reacting to it you know so so bananas and oranges bread juice you know i mean what else can i say about it <laughs> Uh, how much of uh, how much of the of the character do we not see? I mean, were there scenes that you threw out because they were too extreme, or because they just kind of didn't serve the kind of the story you were trying to tell here? <laughs> um, we no, it was more um, it, more plot stuff that was extreme. Like it, it, you know, we were always trying to balance between like conventional fun type thing and then what could happen in a real 24 hour period well, the so beginning like, we we re were you guys reworked the beginning we shot but as far as like the beginning we threw that out we re sort of structured it and rewrote it. i mean that was the hard part like how to get into it and even in the edit it was a challenge of like it's like eight minutes before donald comes on the screen and it's like in a way it's it was sort of like that it, it, it kind of slips into gear once Donald gets on screen and the, I don't know I mean the beginning seemed like it was a little bit of like a, a trick to figure out mm -hmm. but like extreme character were there extreme characters that didn't exist before kind of that we didn't see here anyway is that that wasn't what I was asking oh you could you could take it that way <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know it's been a long week I don't know I don't know I'm yeah <laughs> I feel like I'm on a fucking some kind of hidden camera show <laughs> Well, t talk a little bit about sort of figuring out when you wanted a joke to land because I, it is actually really interesting uh, the way that you know you, you're led all down all these different kinds of pathways in the movie and, and sometimes they're funny and sometimes it's sort of like it's almost creepy. It's like uh, you know, is, is this guy gonna like kill his old friend from high school? Or is it like you don't really know what Donald's end game is, and and a lot of that is revealed over the course of the movie. So you know, as you were kind of figuring out the tone of the movie, how much did you guys kind of think about like how this was gonna uh, play for people? Well, that was a big thing we talked about a lot was, uh, I mean, Chris and I would talk on the phone. 
and it would kind of bounce back and forth, like figure you know Donald out and how wacky he was gonna be. And he, you know, I remember him calling once and just being like, uh, he can't be a teddy bear. He can't be comfortable for the audience. Like we're coming up with this stuff that's just kind of it's too crazy. Like he has to be a threat. And I think that's part of like the anxiety that exists throughout the movie is like you don't kind of know what he's gonna do. And the the gun scene came at, uh, really came to us very late. Um, it was really only a few days before we shot where that really crystallized like exactly how we were gonna do that. And I think that came from from talking through that those that tension, those ideas. And what what about the ending of the movie? I mean, it's really ambiguous in in the sense that we don't really know. You know where these guys are at. I mean, did it? W how did you arrive at that particular destination for where you wanted to end this relationship? I'm gonna try to redeem myself. Let's um, do it. <laughs> the bar's yeah, high, Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the yeah, well, I mean, that came from the short. So like the short, you know, because the short was just a simple thing. So it was just 17 minutes, and it, he just simply dropped me off, um, or I dropped Peter off. <coughs> So when we were when we were writing the the feature, you know, we had the idea that like Peter would like smash uh, Donald's stepfather's like Corvette or Porsche up or something like that, or re and really kind of have the, him extend himself to like, you know, extend himself for for Donald. But it, it just felt too, it just didn't felt feel right. And the whole time we were just trying so hard to to. Um, maintain the feeling of the short and be true you know uh stay true to what how that how the short felt and everything but just extended over a longer period of time so we just kind of went back to that beginning that uh, that ending that just developed really because of a short and the nature of a short and but it just did feel right to have peter only in a real 24-hour period yeah. just have a seed of change you know the change that the plant the seed was planted for this idea of change or just acknowledging that he's not you know that there's an importance to this relationship and he gives him his number and that's pretty like a big step so yeah it's almost like you can start imagining the sequel here where these guys continue their relationship we, we've yeah. had a lot of fun thinking of ideas not we, we'll probably never see any of them but they're fun yeah Donald Again, Trump I'm too. always annoying him on the subway, so yes. it's like I can, yes. yeah, I mean, the things that I could say on the subway and here in New York, kind of this Crocodile Dundee experience. So. so you can turn Donald on and off just like that, basically. D there's no turning off. It's just, it's just on. It's just like <laughs> I said, it's just a matter of changing my, turning my voice on and off. <laughs> but, uh, Kyle, what, what, what were the challenges of being a producer on a project like this with, with as they said, a very short shooting period, not a lot of how many places did the how many places did you shoot in? I mean, what was the limitation there? I mean, w you know, one of the we made the film with very limited resources, and I think that was the biggest challenge. You know, and it was like there was you know twelve of us or something, and we shot a lot in the minivan, and you know, like finding a funeral home, like when you don't have a budget or a locations department, like that is a little bit of a challenge in and of itself. But um, you know, like that's also part of the fun of it. I think it just felt like a real I don't know. There's it, it, that also for me can be fun. You know, it just feels like film school, or it feels just like it kind of feels like a camping trip or something. You're just like with a group of friends, and you're sort of like working all day, and then you kind of all go back and crash and have a beer at the end of the day, and kind of I don't know. It's it, it's you know pros and cons, I guess. And the local, like being from the area and stuff. I mean, people were supportive. Like yeah, it's sort of a hometown yeah, crowd, and it's helps. like oh, you guys are making a movie. That's cool. We want to help out, and like we want to see this local guy kind of get out there and do his thing, and even though they have no concept of like what an indie film is or what that means or anything, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and what is your relationship to that local scene? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still living there and I, yeah, no, I really like where I'm from and I really like the state. I mean, aside from some of its like financial choices and politics sometimes, but um, yeah, no, I, I have no, like my, my thing with this movie is just guilt and feeling like a bad person. Um, but nothing to do with the town. I love Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah, I really do. If record. you come in the summer, I mean, yeah, it's got <laughs> Not great, when great the restaurants. Movie takes place, right. um, so before we open it up to the audience, one thing I would like to ask you about is this movie launched like a year ago in the South by Southwest Film Festival. It's been traveling around. What's it been like for you as a filmmaker having made this movie and, and seeing that it, you know, it works for some people? You know, what what can we expect from you going forward? As, since this is your first film, you're sort of you know, you're entering that next chapter now. 
yeah. I, oh God, I mean, it, you just by the way, I'm sounding. It was all pure luck. Uh, no, I'm very, I'm very excited um, that people. I'm excited that people like it. Uh, I, dude, I am. I feel like something. I am sorry. I mean, this is getting taped. I don't know <laughs> what is going on. We've been we've been doing this uh, we've been doing this a lot. We've been like yeah. talking all week. We've been flying Art. around, which is amazing. And so it, it's been very it's been very good, very exciting. It's great. Yeah, going well. It's great. We've been at it for a while. It's just nice that you know yeah, people are are coming out or seeing it and it's showing places and that you know that there's just now an opportunity for people to you know read what you have or listen, take the time to listen to you. So that's very exciting. And hopefully, yeah, we can kind of turn that into something else. You're writing more stuff and uh, just yeah, random thoughts, memoirs, just <laughs> 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 It's a good start. Yeah, yeah, I mean as you can see, I want to do more public speaking. That actually <laughs> seems like a passion of mine. Um, so we're gonna open it up for audience questions. Uh, just uh stick your I hand know you're in gonna get air. a good answer. The b like I said, the bar said hi. Um, where is somebody I'm gonna give you the mic gentleman here had a question. Uh, you, you talk about the movie in very informal terms, to say the least, but uh, how do you get a movie like this produced? I mean, think of all the parts. It's got all the parts. It's in a movie theater here in New York City. You've had distribution. You get a half-page review in the Times, and it takes money. You're staying in a hotel and so on. you got to travel. Uh, what? Just give me a, a sense. I mean, you have no uh, spacecrafts. There's no stupid he heroes. And to how do you get uh, a movie like this out? Uh, well, we, um, you know, Sam, who's sitting behind you, produced the movie with me, uh, as did uh, other people in the room. And you know, we've done it. We've done this a couple of times before. So we had a bit of a track record, which I think helps. And um, we were lucky enough. I mean, obviously, they had the short film, which is. Totally a proof of concept. So if um, you know you you know you need money to f to get to shoot the film, and so it's a process of like reaching out to people that you think would be supportive of something like this. And we were really lucky to find a couple of individuals who were like just totally down, and and they knew that yeah, there's no movie stars in this, but they saw the short film and I think responded to that, and I th and sort of knew some of the work that that um, some of us our previous work, and they they. Just that you know, there's some trust and faith based on the quality of previous work. So, they came on board, and we we got some money together to shoot it. You, having done this a couple times before, you know a couple people that can help make the movies, and and you call them, and you kind of coerce them to come up to Rhode Island for two weeks to work on the film, and um, you just kind of do that. You kind of you, you know you don't have money to pay people really, so you're working off of favors and just people who are in it for the love of it, and um, you know then you cut it together in the same way. It's you coerce a guy to edit it for you for an entire summer and um, then you entire year. Yeah. Or however long it was. And um, and then again having done this, you, you kind of have some relationships at film festivals or with the industry, the more, you know, mainstream industry, sales agents, distributors, stuff like that. So we were lucky enough to get the film into a film festival at the South by Southwest Film Festival, which was like a great venue for this kind of film. That's like that's the audience that would respond to this kind of film, sort of a cult film audience and uh, a comedy audience. And yeah, the movie did really well down there and it did really well in that context enough so that a distributor who was in the theater, they fell in love with it and they were really passionate and they wanted to come on board and bring it out to a larger audience. So I, that's oversimplifying in a way, but um, and just, just a, a, little, a little context too, like we had so much trouble finding a finding him. It was like years of that. And then once we found, because we had been working kind of in our own bubble for a long time, and then it was like connecting with a couple of producers, they, just, they didn't really necessarily know what they were doing. Finally, we luckily met Kyle, he saw the short, and then that really kicked things into gear and we started to make a real movie, I guess. But that too is also through Sam, who's a Rhode Island guy, Rhode Island guys. And so it's all sort of, it starts social. It just starts with relationships, friends of friends. And, you know, if you just put it out there that you're trying to do this and you're, and if you are doing that in the right communities and the right contexts at film festivals or at film events, you'll eventually, it'll take some time, but you'll find the people that are going to come on board and help you. If you're, if you're making some, I mean, yeah, you will, no matter what, even if it's not 
what I would think is good. You'll find people. Yeah, and um, yeah, and to, 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 it doesn't really answer that question, but I do want to acknowledge, like, just kind of coming off that, like, this is like a very much a dream come true to be showing the movie here, and like the people he named, like a lot of these people are here, and like if it wasn't for their belief to like do this and how important their roles were in that, whether it's helping with financing or just getting the movie made, like that. Thank you, everyone. Doing who's, it for no who's money. Who's here right now, and I can't see because this fucking light is super bright. But, like, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and really it just takes people coming together and believing in something. And, yeah, I just want to really... Totally thank. true. Not to take anything away from that, but also just to give it back to these <laughs> guys. Like, when you're making something that's good, that helps. You know what I mean? Like, I've done this before, and, and it's it's hard if people aren't liking the movie, but when people like the movie then you, you know, it, it helps. It, it sort of attracts crowds, so. You missed all the good stuff. Yeah. You missed, but it's on tape. You can, we can play it back for you. Um, hi, uh, thanks. I would like to ask something about the conversations you had. Um, I m remember two scenes um, where Donald, the first one where Donald was in the car and um, he was explaining that he followed his friend on fan Facebook and in the end of the conversation find out, oh, it wasn't him, it was a totally different person or a uh, second scene like he told about his girlfriend who he made pregnant and then during the conversation find out, oh, maybe he's not even the dad, he's not even sure. So uh, was this by script or did you do improvisation on this? So it was a really weird experience to hear someone talk like this. <laughs> no, the, 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 fa the Facebook was, it was in the script. Um, so yeah, that, that was scripted. And the other one was the... The girlfriend that was scripted. The girl... Oh, the real estate? No, no, the, no, 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 the, the diner, diner. The girlfriend oh, that you got baby. pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the girlfriend. Um, yeah, no, that was all... Yeah, that was scripted as well. I mean, we, we did a lot of, like, running around in the diner i mean as far as dialogue goes but that was we would move ideas the, donald having a child scenes. like yeah that was definitely in the script having this i mean i like to think it is his but um yeah that was that was in the script so before we let you guys go it does make a difference when people enjoy a movie that they spread the word about it maybe you could like just really quickly let people know where else Folks can check out the film. Particularly this kind of movie that doesn't have celebrities to get people to the theater. This totally only works off of word of mouth. So if you liked it, please tell your friends or tweet about it or Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Where can they see it? So it's showing New York and L.A. right now. They can People can go see it. You can see it again in 20 minutes right here if you want to. Um, yeah. um, you're going to get catch a bunch of stuff the second time. DonaldCried.com. So we're rolling out to about 60 different cities next starting next week at all kinds of random little places. So if you're from a different state, like it's likely that it's playing there, playing like Atlanta, San Francisco, you know, big cities, the ones that you would think have indie theaters. It's the third time. When you see it a third time is really... <laughs> Then it becomes science when fiction it or Yeah, it becomes, right? yeah, really, <laughs> you can see what we were trying to get to. Well, stay tuned for the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much thanks for coming, yeah, everybody. Thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you.